But how, you how highlighted so? something earlier that I think is central to the uh, essential to this discussion is that we have fundamentally different faith commitments on epistemology. So, we, oh yeah, you know, we right. Yeah, text. I I don't I don't believe so, that there's a perfect text. I don't believe God would create a perfect text because then that text would become the deity rather than pointing to the deity. When there's errors in a text, you actually have to go to the source of the text, which presumably is God, and rely on God. Then you can look at the text and you can say, what's the pattern by which God communicates his will? Well, he calls prophets and he calls apostles. The words prophets and apostles in those texts mean a messenger, an envoy, a spokesperson, somebody who speaks for God. That's what's going on in the biblical text. So God's pattern is to do that. That's how he so does it. I guess my, my question for you would be, um, if your um, reading of scripture is correct or your epistemology is correct in comparison to ours, why, well, why is what I that... said not correct? Is anything I said not correct? No, I'm I'm asking you a question. If if your understanding of scripture on all these points, everything that you said in terms of uh, the discussion that we've had, if um, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints is correct in its epistemology of the New Testament, uh, the 27 books of the New Testament, my question is why was that lost for so many years? Until uh, Joseph Smith. Why was what lost? Um, the correct understanding of the Old Testament. Uh, in terms of the New Testament's understanding of the Old Testament. Why Why has the church for so many, for 1800 years before Joseph Smith, why did it uh, agree with us rather than you? It, it didn't. No, but it did. It did I'm agree a with first us. century Christian that believed in Sola Scriptura. Um, Paul. Oh, oh, Paul believed in sola scriptura. That's we would get that as he's writing scripture, as he's creating scripture. He believed in sola scriptura. He would. Oh, okay. Well, he just believes in an open canon that you can add to, right? Yeah, but he, yeah, but he believes that there is an apostolic think, of the scriptures of the New Testament scriptures, that and that's sola consider, scriptura. And that is where in Galatians, when he's writing, he says that we are to judge those who um consider themselves apostles or angelic teachers okay you can judge whoever you want by whatever standard you choose so yeah, but he gives us a standard anyway well so yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, but the, right. que the question remains what why has the church believed in the doctrine of the trinity as stated from like the council of nicaea they, they haven't well okay since 300 years after jesus they believed in something yeah, but, but there's there's evidence before the Council of Nicaea. The, but the question is, why would, at least from 300 to 1800, why would this have been all lost? What was lost? The, an the, understanding, the correct understanding, the of, who understanding of who God is. Okay, was asking. okay. so there, there's there's a, a bunch of problems. Well, the pro the, one of the biggest problems yeah. is that you're not in that tradition because you guys are Protestants. Well, no, we are in the tradition of believing in the triune God, which has been all the way throughout the, the Catholic Church's history. Like I said before, well, the, development of the, the, the development of the Trinity is, is a reactionary doctrine predicated on political concerns. Reactionary to scripture? And, no. There, there's yes. no. There's no Trinity in the biblical texts. There's no concept uh, of the Trinity. Uh, 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 yeah, and and again, it it's, it's demonstrates really simple to prove. Show yeah. me the text that explains and articulates the Trinity. Uh, uh, well, well, but I, I was well, just reading. You. Well, because again, like, like, no, well, no, I find me a passage that explains the Trinity. I don't see it. the the passage in Hebrews doesn't. It just says that there's a so, God wait, and wait, that wait, God wait, has wait, a God. Wait, wait, no, the, no. The question I would ask is, do you do you reject all theological constructs then? So, if the, if the term is not specifically used in the text, would you reject any theological construct? No, the word Trinity is irrelevant to the con yeah. to the conversation. Okay. The okay, word so Trinity just identifies yeah. a conceptualization of God. It's that conceptualization. So, okay. So we would, God we would that agree that we can't have some such thing as a theological construct. Right. Yeah. You find me a text in the biblical canon yeah. that explains the triune God as you understand it. Read it to me. Well, I was reading you parts of uh, Hebrews one, which we believe <clears throat> which doesn't explain that. It doesn't articulate that. It talks well, about two gods. Well, well, well. Do you believe that in the Old Testament it's identified God the Father? There is a God the Father, correct? That's that's a You'd very that, very right? complex argument. Of course, no, but you would say that the Old Testament does identify as God the Father. You, we would all say that, right? Does is God identified as a as a 
patriarch or a father figure. Father, yeah, but also yes. Sure. Okay, and so in Psalm 2, does it say that there's a begotten son that's also identified? To what yeah, extent? There's they a agree. disagreement as to what that means. Yeah. All right, so there's a father, there's a son. So can we both say that to some extent the father and the son are both identifiable in the Old Covenant under the Old Testament? Right, both... but so that doesn't that doesn't speak the Trinity. But, but it, is there any place in the Old Testament where I can point to God's Spirit, or no? I, 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 I covering the waters. No. Not, well, that's so. Show me a. a so right um, there, I identify the Father, century. the Son, and the Holy Spirit all in the Old Testament then, right? Okay, so identifying that there's a Father, a Son, and the Holy Spirit does what exactly for your argument? That when it says, let us make man in our image, therefore in the Old Testament it teaches that God's the Father, there's a Son. They may have not understood that to our extent today because... No, 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 I, that's what I'm saying. I understand okay. that there's a Father, a Son, and the Holy Spirit. But just because uh, the, the specific English word Trinity isn't no, used. No, it's not the word Trinity. Trinity. It's not the word Trinity that's missing. That's not the word. The, the word Trinity was coined by Tertullian no, centuries uh, later. I'm not worried about Trinity. I don't need to, because the word Trinity used by the, the first, the, the pre Nicene fathers had nothing to do with an ontologically co substantial triune God. They used the word Trinity in the same way Latter day Saints today use the word Godhead, which is a word that actually is in the biblical text. So yeah, in but, the sense that there is a Father, a Son, and the Holy Spirit, explain to me, find me the formulation in the biblical text that explains your understanding of their relationship to one another. That well, how are they again, one to, how are they one God? Singular let us, let us make man in our image. In plural okay. Man. That just means one that God, just means that image. that just means what? Let us make man in our image. Yeah, that the image is singular. I, I told my two. wife, I said, let us make children in our image. Does that mean Give what? Give us relevant not God. From eternity, let us make man in our image. That means plur plurality, three persons. Well, from eternity. What? What do you mean from eternity? That you and your wife through sex made an offspring. That's right. great. But through eternity, that means let us make man in our image. That means that they already existed as father, son. No, it Holy means Spirit. let us make man in our image. That's what it means. Anything else you say after that is you constructing but, something. Because it doesn't we, explain it. Well, we can trust it from what the Old Testament already teaches about who God is. That he's eternally existent. Don't you agree with that or no? That, that he's eternally existent means yeah. what? But do, do you agree with that statement? But look, I, I think you have... Uh, a really unusual understanding of the text. It's, it's I guess it's common for, for evangelicals, but so do you, do you think that the, that the Genesis chapters one and two are like an actual historical thing that happened? An actual, yeah. That, that God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. Right. Uh, but you think that the, the, the well, I mean, I, I, I texts believe are, God literally made the world and everything out of nothing in six literal days. Okay. Yeah, I believe but that. those are, well, those are revelation given to, presumably moses correct yeah but like again six it, literal it, days yep six, that's six what literal days Three, four, five, six. well i would rest on the seven. all right i may disagree with him i would say like does it have to be literal well no well i'm not, I'm not saying i'm not saying you need to agree with me necessarily but i would say that it actually happened was adam and eve real people i would say yeah, yeah. of course i mean there's so, I mean, we would say that on an issue like this, uh, th different things would fall under what we would call the theological triage. So there are some issues that we would believe, like in the top, the very top of the triangle would be like, these are essential for salvation. You know, there's, there's some in the middle that would be essential for for uh, unity of the body in terms of worshiping at church. So we, we would accept that a Presbyterian is a Christian, but we would disagree over their understanding of uh, polity or baptism. But we would uh, we'd still believe that they're Christians. We would go to different churches. And then there are some issues that we would disagree of within the same church. So, I mean, these issues might be minor. Um, so the issue of literal six-day creation or, uh, I don't know, day-age theory, that's something that might fall in terms of the category, the, th the, the lowest rung of the category, where we might disagree on it, but we could still go to the same church. But I would still well, say, like, do you, wait, do you believe that Adam and Eve were real people or no? I, I believe I don't care. 
I would. You don't I care. Wouldn't care. Why would I care? You wouldn't care at all. Why? Why would I care? How would I know one way or the other unless God specifically tells me that they are? Well, <laughs> we would say that that's, that's a thing. We would literally it. think. We would say that right, would, right. You guys yeah. read. See, that's the thing is, you don't realize how circular what you guys say is. Oh, and how it much is it's, circular. Oh, yeah, I do. and 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 how it, it it's just a, a closed system of of circularity well, wait, that becomes wait, so, nonsensical. So, so, it, so when the New Testament teaches the Bible that, says it, so I believe it because the Bible says it, so I believe it. That's what I so, would I would agree with that. Right. Wait, so, so, so how we, did you oh, wait? How did you get into the circle in the first place? By the regenerating regenerating power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay. So God, God places you into a circular reasoning. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I was the same trap. Like, so when you read the New Testament, that Jesus is the better. But God doesn't Adam. want me in that circle. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait. Maybe not yet. Wait, 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 wait. But if the New Testament teaches that Jesus is the better Adam, and he fulfilled the law, what does that mean to you? If we don't really know if Adam really existed or not. Fulfilled the law in what way? Well, I'm asking you where when it says that Jesus fulfilled is the better what law? Adam. What does it mean by better Adam? What does that mean? Uh, Jesus actually did what he was told. Ver as opposed to what? Adam who didn't do what he was told. But we don't even know if Adam really existed or not. Right. Neither would the author of that text. But, uh, okay. I, I, I don't see like the, I don't see why that would matter if we don't know if Adam really existed. Because if Adam did exist, that means it really does have meaning if Jesus fulfilled the law the way Adam couldn't. Okay. So the author of a text, so the author, so Paul believes Adam and Eve really existed, right? Sure. And so you do. Well, yeah, because the Bible, I would say that scripture teaches it. Right. Like, again, yeah. that's a circular reasoning. But yeah, you presuppose you presuppose every look, you guys you you presuppose everything in the Bible is factually correct. Then you presuppose that only the Bible is factually correct. Then you presuppose that it's the final word of God. Then you presuppose that it's the only rule of faith. And the way you get into that presuppositional circular logic is God placed you there. Yeah. Well, right? but the only reason, but I didn't always God, believe. God hasn't placed me in that. Wait, wait, but I'm saying, but wait, wait, but I, I didn't always believe this, though. The reason why I believe it is because I believe that God chose to save me because he made me a new being. Mm -hmm. I love God now. I love reading the scriptures. I love going to church. Well, you I love, love your understanding of God and you love your understanding of the scriptures yes, and you love your understanding of all those things. But I'm saying the reason why I have this new attitude now is because I would say that God saved me. But the but the but you're saying the circular logic of like, I believe the Bible's true. Therefore, I believe that, you know, and then you say who God is or my understanding of who God is, and it's circular. I understand why you say that. But so like, I have a I have a yeah. deep and abiding faith that God lives, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of the world, the Redeemer of mankind. I believe that God, through the ministrations of prophets, gives us what we need to know and inspires them to lead us and guide us. I think that he's done that throughout history until a bunch of people decided that they could rely on what written documents existed and that they no longer needed those people. Then they started to create doctrines based on interpretations of texts rather than relying on God to continue to inspire and reveal truth and, and leading them through question. that person. And those are political views. And I believe okay. that he continued that pattern by restoring that process through Joseph Smith. 